Hi, my name is Jason Bartley with Wireless Car, one of the world's leading telematic service providers. We provide a wide range of services from emergency assistance and automatic crash notification through location-based services such as vehicle locator, all the way through breakdown and roadside assistance. We also offer several extended services such as email and text services within the vehicle. And we offer these services to both consumer and commercial automotive OEMs. Some of the brands that we currently service through a white label branding strategy are Volvo Car and BMW globally. We are also part of the Volvo IT organization, which is part of the larger Volvo AB organization. And we derive quite a few synergies from the large infrastructure and support that we get from that large organization. We are very happy this year to have been awarded the Best Telematics Service Provider Award from the Telematics Update Organization, and we thank everyone for their nominations and their support in receiving that award. What we'd like to show you is our reference implementation of a simple demonstration of our remote services. It starts on the PC, and it will wind up here on the tablet, which uh, really represents the in-vehicle head unit experience that a driver would have. So here is our integrated web portal. That would be a combination of many remote services, remote diagnostics, uh, e economy ratings, uh, vehicle report cards, and you're looking at the dashboard. But I'm going to drill down past the dashboard and show you a couple specific features. First, we'll look at the remote services. This is a summary page of your vehicle. And then under remote control, we have several different options. What I'm going to demonstrate first is opening and closing windows. You can see that currently it's reporting that the status of the windows is closed. And here on the tablet, you can see that in fact on our virtual car, the windows are closed. Now if I go back to the laptop and I trigger a remote window opening, you'll see that it's now reporting that the windows are open. And here you can see that the windows have opened on the vehicle simulator. Just to be clear, this tablet is currently running through a cellular 3G connection. And this laptop is connected with Wi-Fi to the internet. And all of the data and commands are traversing through our back-end architecture, as they would to a real vehicle. I'd also like to show you the remote lock and unlock for the doors. Again, it's a very straightforward interface. It's reporting that the doors are currently locked, so we will unlock the vehicle. We now see that uh, the vehicle is unlocked, and if we look over here, it may be a little difficult to see unless you zoom in. You can see that the lock lever is in the up position. If you stay on that, I will just trigger a relock, and you'll be able to see that it does, in fact, relock. There, it is now retracted. So that's a brief demonstration of how these remote services could be handled from a user interface on the internet through any standard browser. What I'd also like to show you is our remote smartphone application. This one is currently running on iPhone. Here you can see again a simple summary page that would tell you whether or not, in this case, the vehicle is an electric vehicle. So it's telling you your battery charge level and your range, but I'm going to move right along here through a summary of onboard systems to the actual remote services triggering page. And again, I am going here, perhaps I can come closer. I'm going to unlock the vehicle. It requests a pin to make sure that I'm the authorized user. And it does trigger the command, which you can now see has unlocked on the vehicle simulator. I can also find the vehicle if it's lost in a parking lot by sending a find me command, which is going to result in the horn honking and the lights flashing. And of course, that would help you find it in a parking lot. So if you were planning to take a trip and you wanted to do a little pre-planning and you wanted to make a few stops along the way, you could come into your online portal for your vehicle. You could come into this feature here where you have a map. I'm going to zoom out a little bit to get the greater Detroit metropolitan area. And we could search for a particular point of interest. Um, let's see here. Let's look for steakhouses. 
And let's just choose one. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh -huh. Ponderosa. I haven't been there in a long time. So we select that POI. It shows us where it is on the map. And then we have a command for send to car. It gives us the ability to add some additional information if we want to. In this case, I'll keep the default information and I'll send it to the vehicle. And if we look here on the tablet, <clears throat> in just a moment, we should see a notification coming in here in the status bar that there's been a new POI. I will click that POI and we're now seeing just a list of saved POIs that have been sent to the vehicle. And you can see Ponderosa has been added to the list. And to demonstrate how we would integrate with a particular OEM's pre-selected hardware vendor head unit and whatever navigation it has, we've chosen to integrate with the built-in Android navigation. So if I click the POI, you'll see that it will send that POI into the built-in Google navigation in Android, and it will start the navigation sequence. Of course, we don't get a GPS signal in the building, so you're not going to see it start to issue commands. But if you were outside in a normal environment, this would start your turn-by-turn -turn navigation. And I think that concludes our demonstration. Thank you.